going to be talking about data. You're in good hands because uh, the two hosts today are big data nerds. So the, the webinar today is Reporting 101, Turning Data into Action. My name is Jordan. I'm a customer success manager here at MaintainX. I'm going to be co-hosting with my, my friend and colleague, Faisan. Faisan, can you say hi to everyone? How are you doing? Well, with great pleasure. Yes. So hi, everyone. My name is Vincent, and I'm part of the implementation team here at MaintainX, and I will assist Jordan in this webinar regarding the data. Excellent. And last but certainly not least, as I said earlier on the call, we have a keyboard wizard, Tristan, who is going to be answering all of your questions in the chat. So one more time, we will be answering a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions, you will be free to chat with them, chat with our team, and we'll be sure to answer them as we go about it. So uh, we hope to take about 30 minutes, maybe 30, 35 minutes in terms of our presentation slides. And then we're going to definitely leave time at the end to answer a few questions live. I'll be asking these questions. Vincent will be answering them. You'll be in great hands. So without further ado, let's go check out the agenda. It is a very focused agenda. We don't have 10 points. We have four points. They're all you really need to know about reporting. We're going to start 35,000 feet in the air. Why reporting? Why do I care about data? Who cares? We're going to then segue into a really, really cool demonstration. Um, why, why talk about data when we can show data? So we're going to be showing you some of our favorite reports. We're going to show you how you can investigate these reports and how you can learn more about these reports. And afterwards, uh, Faisal will be handing it back to me. I'll take the mic, and I'm going to be talking about how to take action from these reports. In my mind, data is useless unless you're making better decisions with it, unless you're learning about your organization. So that's one of the last points we're going to touch on. And like I said at the end, we're going to do a live Q&A where we're going to be answering some of those questions in, in verbal format. So a quick little introduction before we move on. Um, we are colleagues at MaintainX, and we are excited to talk about MaintainX and the reports out of it. But a little bit about us, our mission is to transform the way frontline professionals manage the equipment and the facilities that power our world. Vincent and myself are really lucky. We get to work with a world-class team that develops and supports our product with industry expertise in manufacturing, facilities, and more. I would say, don't take my word for it. Learn from each other, you know, trust each other. And luckily for us, a lot of our customers believe in us. And, uh, and if you go check out software advice, if you go check out G2 or previously G2 Crowd, you're gonna see that we are the top leader in a ton of categories and have been over the last few years. So if you currently don't have a CMMS platform, take a gander at MaintainX because we're, we're getting better, we're only getting better, and we're already at an excellent state. And we're gonna be showing you some of the great features that we have access to. And if we move on to the next slide, we're gonna show you some of the customers that are currently using MaintainX to power their organization. And you know what? Some of these customers are using the reporting that we're going to be talking about as well. Just as a reminder, I'm seeing a few chats. This webinar will be recorded and any of the attendees will be receiving an email in the next coming business days where you will receive the webinar just in case you want to rewatch it. So let's move on to the next slide. Let's start with the why. Let's, let's you know, move away from the weeds and let's talk a little bit more generic. Let's move to the next slide. Data is already available to you. You already have access to it. It's already a free resource that you've been building up while using your MaintainX system. So first things first, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to build anything. Our team has already built a ton of great reports in the system. So it's a free resource that you already have access to. What's stopping you currently from using it? And you know what? It's a very common trouble. Uh, Forrester actually reports 74% of firms say they want to be data-driven. They want to be leveraging data. They want to make decisions on it. And guess what? Less than 30% are actually successful at connecting 
the analytics to action. So almost everyone wants to use data. Not many folks are actually using it. So it's a very common problem that we're hopefully going to take a stab at and, and move towards on today's webinar. So why, why data? Why reporting? I would just say whatever decision you're going to be making, the best decisions are always the ones while using the most relevant data to your advantage. Think of data as your rear view window, your rear view mirror, and your windshield. It allows you to learn what has happened in the past, and data is going to be able to educate you on what can happen in the future. You're always the best driver when you can see the entire road. It's the same thing with data. Whether you're a supervisor, whether you're a technician, a manager, or a VP, you're making your best decisions when you understand the entire context of the situation and you can see the complete picture. So I hear a lot, hey, Jordan, I want to use my gut. My gut has experience. I have 10, 20 years of experience. Combine your gut instincts with data. That's going to be the best of both worlds. That's going to allow you to be statistically relevant based on you know, six months, three months of data and use all of your expertise. Let's move on to the next slide. Thanks, Vincent. So great, I know that it's powerful. I know I should use it. Where do I use it? I have customers that are trying to communicate to their customers, their clients themselves. And let's say they have four different customers across four different locations. It's very easy for you to export your completed work orders in the last month and to share with each of those clients to share just the work orders that were completed from that particular location. Let's say upper management, hey, Jordan, I'd like more visibility on what your team's doing. Can you show me what are the big projects you're working on? Can you show me where there's room for improvement? Reporting allows you to be better communicating with your management to clearly showcase the work and the progress that you're making. And all this leads to two things that I think are incredibly important, accountability and transparency. In 2023, these are incredibly important. As we move in, we really need to focus on communicating properly of what work is being done, where's there room for improvement, and how can we take action towards making those improvements. Reporting allows you to get better with accountability. It allows you to be more transparent with the work that you're completing. So let's move on. I'm going to now hand the mic over and, uh, and hopefully we all learn a few things from this great demo. Thank you very much for that, Jordan. That was really uh, informative. So in today's demo regarding the reporting module, that is of course, available um, only on desktop. You can see here on the left-hand side, the third one from the top, reporting. Uh, we will mainly focus on three different reports within our reporting page. The first one is the assets maintenance, which shows you a list of your assets that don't have a repeating uh, work order assigned to it. Now, the reason why we want to spend time on talking about this report is that maybe some of you don't have any preventive you know, schedule for all of your assets. You basically only do reactive work. And our goal is really to help you out to move from a reactive maintenance to a more preventive maintenance. So if, you, if it's the case of your business where you don't do any preventative work, then having access to this list here, simply by clicking on see all, you can see the list of all of your assets that don't have, again, a repeatable work order. So starting from your more critical assets, you can then go ahead and create a first PM, whether it's you know, a monthly inspection, greasing some bearings, stuff like that. You know, the, the basics really of all of the, the maintenance that you can do on a piece of equipment, it's all about getting those first few repeatable work orders. And having, again, this list here, if you click on the extend, this allows you to have uh, some more information where those assets are located, if you have some barcodes to help you as well as all of that, as well as using the search bar here. So it's really all about giving you the data to help you start moving from reactive to repeatable. Now, scrolling up to the top of the page, as you can see, there are 
plenty of reports that are available in the reporting module. But again, the other two reports that we want to spend some time on today to talk about are the created versus completed one and the reactive versus repeatable. So just before jumping into both of them, the first thing that you want to do every time that you go into the reporting page is make sure that you select a date period that is relevant to the data that you're trying to capture. Um, as of right now, as you can see, I'm looking for uh, the last six months, which are from August 1st to uh, January 31st. So created versus completed here. Um, what this graph shows is all of the work orders that were created during this time period and all of the work orders that were completed during this time period. Note that those two data points are separate from each other, which means that it may happen that at some point your amount of completed work orders is higher than your amount of created work order. So don't be surprised. This only means that the work order that were completed might have been created before the beginning of the date period. And in this instance, that would mean they were created before August 1st. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, it's great. I have some data in there. I do see some colors, but how do I interpret the data? How do I, and what should I be looking for when I look at the created versus completed graph? And I have three words for you today, which are um, volume, completion, and consistency. And going from the first to the third one, so volume, what we're looking for is a good amount of work orders that are created in the system. It's no secret that the goal of using maintain apps is to capture pretty much every single task and work that you perform on a daily basis and create a work order for it to give you this tracking ability and this uh, reporting capabilities as well. The second one, uh, completion. Well, of course, when you create a work order, you want to complete it as well. You want to make sure that your team is completing all of the work that they should be completing in a specific time frame. And this is what the completion percentage here at the top right of the graph allows you to see really quickly. And the third one, which I would believe is the most important one, is consistency. So we want to make sure that on a week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month basis, we see approximately the same amount of work orders that are created and completed. What a good consistency shows is a good usage of the system first, and then um, an account that is LT as well. Now I'm jumping into some more details about you know, what we can cover as well during implementation of the system where having an account that is LT is really something that is important because it shows that you're using the system the right way and at the right time. Jumping into the third report that we see here uh, on the right-hand side, so reactive, repeatable, and repeat in ratio. This report shows for all of the work orders that were created during this time period. So if we do the, the math here, we're back to the same amount of work orders that were created. But if I click on this one here, We'll go to the reporting details where we have some more details. I'll jump into that in just a few seconds. But you see that the amount of reactive work orders and the amount of repeatable are separated in two different colors. And you can see them over the different time period on the graph. What this uh, lets you know really is how much time are you spending and you know how many work orders were created for issues, firefighting, you know, correcting some um, reactive problems, really. And on the other end, you have all of the repeatable, so things that were uh, scheduled that you knew that you needed to, that you performed those work orders in this given time frame. Um, and at the bottom of the screen here, we see some grouped by. So you have the ability to group all of this data by team, assignee, assets, location, category, and so on. Um, and again, just to, to circle back a little bit on what I said from the previous graph, you know, the things that are important to take out of this graph and what is the key data that you want to get out. Um, one thing that we see often is uh, you would want to look at your asset and see, okay, on which asset, maybe again, should we move from a more reactive 
to a more preventive maintenance. And this can be easily done. As you can see, I list all of the work orders by assets and I sort them for the most number of reactive work orders. And then you can do a comparison between both reactive and repeatable. And scroll it down just a little bit here. We see that for, for the boiler number three, we have a total of 41 reactive work orders that were created during the last few months and absolutely no repeatable work orders. So as a, a manager or someone that looks at the reporting on maintenance, what it tells me is we have 41 time we went to repair an issue on boiler number three, but we never actually took the time to maybe uh, you know, just do some light preventative work that may have cut this amount in half. And if we were to just create a monthly inspection, it could be as simple as visual inspection of your asset as well. Then maybe we cut this amount in half. We're down to 20 reactive work orders for only a few hours of repeatable. And this is where you go and get the gain on the time that you're spending on repairing your equipment but as well on the cost, because usually when something breaks on an equipment, this means changing some parts. It means maybe um, getting someone from a third party, so a contractor that comes in house. And this is all some cost that can be uh, avoided only by setting some really basic preventative maintenance work orders. And this is really what I wanted to show about the three reports that we talked about. So again, consistency, volume, moving gradually from reactive to repeatable. As I like to tell all my clients, we always need to learn to walk before we can run. So starting with some individual monthly uh, maintenance work orders is the way to go. I like that a lot. Thank you, Vesa. Can we go back one more? I just have a quick question for you. Absolutely, yes. Here to keep you on your toes. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to look at certain assets that were showing a lot of, let's say, overdue yep. work orders, is that possible? It is absolutely possible. So there's a couple of ways. Um, the easiest way to go is to use the filters. So filters are really your friend in the reporting module. Um, as you can see, you can filter for categories, which is a very powerful tool. But if we scroll down a little bit more, we have the asset, which allows you to say, okay, I want to see only for one specific asset, all of the type of work orders that were done and all of that. So again, we could go ahead. We had our boiler number three that was here. We have a couple one, but I'll hope that it was the right one here. And then going back to the summary page, we have an on-time versus overdue work orders where you could see, okay, out of all of the work orders that were overdue, um, you could click on the data, have the list and see, okay, maybe it's always the same type of work that we don't perform on time. Maybe it's always the same team that is supposed to do this work that doesn't complete the work on time as well. And then this also allows you to take some data-driven decisions on maybe I need to talk with this team and see, why are you not performing the work on time when the audit team are able to do it? Does that answer your Excellent. question, Jordan? Yes. It answers three questions, so thank you. Well, awesome. Perfect. Much appreciated. So now we're going to move back to the presentation. Thank you for the demonstration, as always, is ever the educational approach. Uh, now let's let's dive in and talk about the how. And I really appreciate Faisal talking a little bit about looking for patterns. And I think that's where we want to focus on next. Let's move on to the next slide. So, you know, we've spent many years looking at data, doing data analysis, uh, building out Power BI and Tableau reports. So lucky for us, we do have a lot of experience. For those that don't have a lot of experience, fear not. Use your expertise, use your curiosity. That is where you should start with the data. My favorite thing is I hope you don't have answers right away going into the data. Look at the data with questions in mind, with a goal. And I think that's really, really, really important. So when you should, when should you be looking at the data? That's really, really important. It depends on when are you making key decisions that might change the processes and the internal workflows 
at your organization. Are you pragmatic and making changes every two weeks? Congratulations. Look at the reports on a biweekly basis. Maybe it's a little bit of a large organization and we are only looking to make changes on a monthly basis on OSMs and procedures. Great. Look at the report on a monthly basis because the more you're looking at the data on an ongoing basis, you're going to have an easier time finding the patterns in the data, finding the unique aspects. Is it one asset that has more overdue work orders than anything else? Is it a certain location that's actually driving a lot of the reactive work orders? The most fun that we have in data is not necessarily knowing where we're going to start, but finding some unique aspects and diving in. And what I really appreciated out of uh, Vincent's presentation is that he didn't just look at the report and say, here's reactive, here's repeatable, great, move on with my day. The benefit of our reporting module and the real power that you can extract out of it is by clicking into a report, looking at it and filtering and doing cross sections and saying, I just wanna see overdue work orders. Now I just wanna see work orders that were created in the last 30 days. Now just show me all of the, the reactive work orders for a certain location. You can splice and filter and segment a ton. And that's where you're gonna find an easier time to find either room for opportunity, where can you get better? And also areas where you're already kicking butt. Where are you excelling? Where can you teach other locations potentially of what's going so right? Is it your safety? Is it your compliance? I have faith that you're doing a great job. We can all do better about communicating the great jobs that we're doing and share that with management and with our customers. So let's, let's move on to the, the next slide. How to take action. So the best way to take action is not once, but is iteratively over time. Start with a goal. And I like SMART. It's a, it's a silly little acronym, but your goals always need to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. That will allow you to create a really specific and strategic goal that you can then base your decisions on and leverage data to learn more and move towards that goal. Once you have a goal, you can then create benchmarks and say, if I want to reduce the number of reactive work orders I have, great. This month, start with your top asset with the most reactive. Next month, go after the next asset with 400 reactive work orders and try and reduce the number of work orders and create preventative maintenance around that. And by the end of three months, you'll have moved towards your goal and pushed past these benchmarks of reducing by 10%, reducing reactive work orders by 50%. And you know what's fun? There will never ever be a perfect end state. There will always be room for improvement for you to grow, whether it's overdue work orders, whether it's reactive work orders, whether it's assets without PMs. There's so much for you to improve within the system and there's so much clarity in the system to communicate where there's room for improvement and where you're already Kicking butt, as I've said, where you are at rate, where are you already succeeding? Now say that five times fast. So what I say is the data is always here to tell you a story, but it might not give you an answer initially. Start with a goal, understand your goal, and then you can research and be curious with the data based on what that North Star is, based on the direction that you're moving towards. And I think that that is gonna be a, a really big piece and allow you to make better decisions because you're learning more about the data. And in the end, you'll be able to, to drive improvements. So thanks for, for listening on. We really appreciate it. Now we're gonna move on to the Q&A section. So if you can give us a minute, we're gonna put together a few questions for everyone and we'll be back and I'll be happy to ask those questions and Vincent will be able to answer them uh, to the best of our ability. And don't forget, I've seen a ton of questions. So I really, really appreciate that. I uh, appreciate your curiosity and your interest in reporting. We have multiple teams here to support you. Whether it's our support team in app, you can ask questions and get qu quick answers. Also, um, your account manager is a great resource for you to reach out to and either schedule a call to, to dive in and they'll be happy to 
go into detail about a specific report or do a quick overview like we've done. Our support pages also have information on reporting and data. So whether you like to learn in person, whether you like quick chat answers, there are resources here and routes to take for you to learn more about the data. So thanks everyone. We're gonna be back in a minute to answer a few questions. And uh, otherwise we really appreciate your time and, and your interest in your questions today. Okay, we're back. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Um, so now let's let's dive into a quick Q&A. I'm going to uh, ask a few questions. I think someone's going to answer them to the best of our ability. And don't forget, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you're interested in learning more, reach out to your account manager, reach out to support, and we'll be happy to share as much information as we have. All right. Vincent, are you ready? Are you mentally and physically prepared? Of course, yeah. Um, who is reporting re available for? Is it only available on the web? It's a great question. So the first part of the answer is reporting is only accessible for administrators by default in the system. And the second part of the answer is yes, it's only available on the web. So no reporting are available within the mobile app. How about, okay, thank you. Great answer, as always. Looking on to the next questions. A few questions are around inspections that have failed yes. and finding a way. Let's go back to the reporting for a second and, and let's go back to filtering and splicing and see if we can get a little bit more specific. So earlier on in the call, we actually looked at reactive work orders and certain assets that were associated with them. But here's another really good point that we can, we can talk to. Absolutely. I mean, one of the other report that is available within the reporting module of MaintainX is completed with inspection checks. Um, app, some of you might know, and if not, I highly recommend that you focus on uh, looking on the past slide and fail. So our inspection checks that are available within the procedure library. Um, this report allows you to quickly see and slice, uh, like Jordan would say, uh, out of all of the work orders that were completed using an inspection check in the date period that is selected, which one had a failure, which one had a flag. So a flag would mean, hey, there's something that is wrong, but we don't need to correct it right now. Uh, but this is something that we need to focus on in maybe a few weeks from now, as opposed to a failure, which would mean that an action needs to be taken immediately. So looking at the list of failures here, you could see the different PMs where there was a failure. You can, again, click on one. This leads us to the work order. We scroll down to the procedure. We see why it failed. Oh, okay, there's a flat front tire and so on. So this is where you get the data about what failure and how many failures did you have in time period. Amazing. Thank you. Um, we're just going to roll now that I have a few questions. So we're going to go into the, uh, the lightning round. Well, we got quick questions and I'm sure quick and, and awesome answers. Um, here's a fun one. How can categories improve reporting? First of all, great question. Thank you for asking. The more information, the more categories, the more we can do, the more we can splice, the more we can investigate. Uh, Vincent, please. Well, I mean, you, you literally just answered the question. I mean, categories is a super powerful tool and if I quickly go back to the reporting details, what, what it allows you is if we filter for one specific asset or one group of asset or something like that, 
we can group all of our work orders based out of categories and see out of all of the reactive work orders, what category is the most often used. So we see that, you know, accident or forklift or electrical. So, okay, we have a lot of electrical issues that are happening. Is there something that changed in our electrical circuits or something like that? So these are all actions and um, data that can be think about when you just sort your work orders by category. So again, using category on work order is something that you should absolutely be doing. Excellent, thank you. Um, next one, which I also really like, we talked a little bit about, you know, tip of the iceberg, that this is kind of just the beginning and whatever you have access to in the reporting, you can always pull out and continue to dive in. If you are really interested, you'll always have access to your own information. So the question is, how can we link our data in Excel so that we have it on our laptop if we wanna create maybe additional pie charts? Maybe we don't love the colors. I don't want blue. Give me another color. All I want is deep red. Can I do that? You can do that for sure. Uh, really easily at the top of the screen, again, within the reporting module, you have the export data section. So if I click on the export data, you see all of the different exporting functionality within MaintainX that you can choose from. And again, we have the same filters that we used earlier in the reporting module that are available. So you can really filter out only the data that is relevant to you before exporting all of that to a CSV file that we see here at the bottom of the page. And even more, you can pre-select the column. So you don't want to have all of the data points. You want to focus on just some of them it's as easy as doing an uncheck and then doing for only, you know, the data that is relevant to what you're looking for. Very nice. The next question is, can we create our own reports if need be? It kind of feels like a segue to this last question. Absolutely. I mean, as of right now, filtering pretty much gets you to creating the visual uh, out of the, the default visual that is available, but only tailoring them to the data that you're looking for. What our team is currently working on, don't know if this is a spoiler alert that I'm uh, doing right now, um, but sometimes in the near future or to come, uh, there will be some custom dashboards that will be available. And you know, not to jump too deep into it, but you will be able to select maybe the three top you know, the three top report are only what you want to look at. You will be able to create a page with only those three and have filters individually for all three of those visuals as well. Brilliant. That's a really good point. Is there any way for other softwares to import their data into our software? So we do have, so MaintainEdge does have an open API that can be used uh, to connect different database together. Uh, and this is really the, the way to work. Note that the open API is only available for premium or enterprise feature though. But if anyone is interested in that, then please reach out to your account manager and they will be responsible to give you all of the details that you're looking for that. Yeah, we play nicely with other companies. We, we have the API access. If you have other platforms that you really wanna have a conversation with us about being able to integrate, being able to push data from two platforms into a Power BI, let's have that conversation. We might not have all the answers right now, but we're really happy to help. We wanna help and we're curious if that's not something that we've built out in the past, let's have that conversation. Let's see what's needed and what's possible. I think that's really, really important. So with that, I think, uh, Let's give everyone some time back in their day. Again, we wanted to thank everyone involved. Thank you, Claudine, for putting everything together. Thank you, Tristan, for being a real keyboard wizard, a keyboard champion, and, and helping us answer all the questions and being able to gather some of the, those questions. A few ho housekeeping before we end off everything. Thank you for joining. We really appreciate you hanging out with us over the last 30, 37 minutes or so. If you ever, you're interested in more information about reporting, there's routes you can take, whether it's going to our resources page, whether it's reaching out to your account manager, whether it's following up and, and reaching out to us, our support team, 
there's a million ways that you can gather information and all of us are here to help you and help you make the most out of your platform. Uh, again, the webinar has been recorded and you will be receiving the recording of the session in a few days time if you're interested in that or if you wanna share it with other members of your team. Huge thank you um, for organizing that. And otherwise, we wish you an absolute fabulous rest of your day. I hope that you're going to be making better data-driven de decisions. I hope that you dive into that reporting. I hope that you act like Sherlock Holmes and Nancy Drew and investigate and be curious because it's going to be able to provide a really clear picture. It'll provide better context. And in the end, you'll be making better decisions. Everyone's going to be better off. So uh, for me, myself, and my co-host, Faisan, we wanted to thank you for your time. And uh, Faisan, thanks so much for answering all the questions, doing all the heavy lifting, doing the live demo. You did it all for us today. You did it all, Jordan. It's all teamwork, right? Teamwork makes dream work. Exactly. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.